us, crazy. Sally, you did. You were a friend, a close friend of Derry Kells. How did that come about? Well, that's a long story. Gracie McDermott was the housekeeper in Larkins when Mammy was a child. And Gracie, Derry Kell came to, Gle to Gle the Glebe and he had to get a housekeeper. And Nellie Gallagher organised Gracie McDermott for... She she worked in Port, Port Nebla and Nellie got Gracie. So Gracie used to come in for a pension every couple of weeks. And Liam Rorty's mother, who went to Larkins after Gracie, was married out of Larkins. And Liam, her son, lived next door to us. So Gracie used to come in for the pension and she would get the pension and she would come in then to wee Molly Larkin and she would sit up there. Wee Molly Larkin. There was very little difference in their ages, I can tell you, for Gracie came when she was very young. So Derek used to come here to pick Gracie up to take her home. And then Derek used to come into the office and then the festival started and he was very interested in that. And that's really how I got to know Derek through the fest through Gracie. And uh, if he wanted to know anybody, I was like a detective. He would have to come and check out with me whether they were so and so okay, could I see them or blah blah blah, or do you know anything about them? But um, he became very, very friendly with us. And uh, he got a lot. He, he started the Friends of the Opera Festival, you know, in Wexford. It was some was instigation of that. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> then, if we wanted somebody to open the festival or do anything, he just mentioned a name to him. I said to him, "One day, Tony O'Reilly. Tony O'Reilly was here. Got five thousand from him. Took the whole family here, bar one. And um, it was great for getting people to to follow the festival. And um, he would help with um, exhibitions and that we would have during the festival and we would have competitions and he would judge them. Um, he loved the arts, of course. But I had him every single morning for years he rang me at a quarter to eight in the morning. Mm. And I'd look out the window to see what kind of an aid it was before I answered the phone. I'd got that, before the mobiles, I can show you the lead to have upstairs <laughs> from the phone up to my room. <laughs> I couldn't get down the time, down the time to answer the phone. And why, why was he ringing? He would just ring up to see how things were, any news or blah, blah, blah. And was he here? Or? He was out in Glen. Oh, and he was out at the garden. He would ring on a regular basis. Right. Like every day, nearly. Sunday, right. quarter to ten. Right. But he brought everybody in here. Or if there was anybody there he wanted me to meet, I would be, you know, be out with him. Yeah. For example, now, the day of Mount Batten's, he was with Mount Batten that Saturday. And, um, and he was he was up and he took a painting of Mount Batten's to revarnish it, and he was going then to the Allingham Festival in Bondor and Bondorn or Ballyshannon because he had a poem put in for it, and he told Mount Batten he was going to this thing because he couldn't stay for the to Monday or to Monday because he had a poem in him, Ballyshannon, and <laughs> Mount Batten said to him, Derek, you're not writing poetry now. I remember him telling me at the time. And they took a poetry to home that day that he was revarnishing for Mountbatten, but Mountbatten was killed. But that Thursday of the festival, uh, he wanted me out, or the Monday he wanted me out, and I said, I can't go out because I had to take the buns out. So when I arrived at Glenvey that day, Tony Murray was there and Jerry Dagnan, and they were in the kitchen, and Nellie got her the dinner ready for me. And they were chatting about Mountbatten, and I said, another God, he's not arriving by Mountbatten today. You know, because that's the mm -hmm. thought was coming up next. And they said, you mustn't hear the news. Well, I didn't hear the news because I was on the way out. And then that evening, he arrived late. And these two ladies were there. And uh, discovered, he wouldn't tell me who they were, just introduced them to me as first names. Discovered afterwards, one of them was the Dutch, the Dowager Duchess of Westminster. And she had a horse in the Grand National that year. And I backed it. And Andy Crummies didn't know how I got the horse, and Dorothy Hanley had the same horse. Came in at a white big price. And the other lady was, um, what? she was um, Diana's aunt, and she was the one that, um, that introduced Diana to Charles. Lady Vermoy, I think was her name. Mm. It wouldn't tell me who they were, but a couple of days after, I was looking at the television, and here was the side dog going down waving out of a carriage. And wasn't it her and I got on to, sure, didn't you know? No, I said, I didn't know. 
it, 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 the weird, the weird things. Oh, mm. used to the weird. I had one here that knew who they were. I had Judy Menion out in the street. Mm. Didn't know who he was. And who uh, there was another? Oh, there was a whole lot of them. Yeah. For example, now there's a card up there, in Lord Gowrie. You see that picture up there? Mm. I was over at Derek's, Derek's memorial, and I brought over a program of Martin Mooney. That's Martin Mooney there. You know Martin Mooney is an artist down in Melton. Right. So I said to him, um, uh, I was over at the memorial, but I took a program of Martin's over because I heard that Fritz Wales brought somebody, to, you know, was with him sometimes painting. So I gave Lord, I told Lord, I got Lord Gary's address, and I said I would send a Martin Mooney painting to him, or in fact, a program catalogue to him. So. I could never find the letter that I wrote to Lord Gowrie. But I found this postcard and with my magnifying glass the last day that I discovered him telling me that and that, that he was sending he was given Lord Gowrie the catalogue whenever or was given Prince of Wales a catalogue whenever he saw him. So Martin Mooney's mother died and he got a call this day from the palace to go painting with the Prince of Wales and he thought it was somebody, you know, a child's calling or getting them on. So he said the mother had died, and then when he came back from the mother's funeral, he got the call to accompany the prince on his tour to Leningrad and Russia. And as a result of that, Martin Mooney was doing this drawing for me while they were throwing eggs at the Prince of Wales. Remember the time he went away and they were throwing eggs? And it was a big, big story at the time. I was given that done, and then he gave me this as a present. But this was all through Derek, you know. Yeah. Because Derek, it was Derek's memorial, it was 2000. He died that, he died. And talked to me on the Saturday and Billy Kelly was here in Mammy. And uh, as, 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 as Sally, Sally who, oh, I came in here in tears. And the two of them went out and said goodbye to him. And I was in Dunlow on Sunday at the festival. Margo was playing on the Sunday night. And the woman I was staying with came up to tell me that the fam mummy had rung, that the family had rung to tell me, didn't want me to know, to get to yeah. knowing the news in the morning. So then I went to British Memorial. Did he? Did he ever paint you? No, he never painted. No, he ne no. I said he never. What's that? She just said he didn't flatter. <laughs> didn't even ask me. That I, no, I that right there. You don't flatter. But what I did do when Gracie died, you see, Gra um, Gracie um, was in the hospital, and on the Thursday, I it was ringing. I, I rang him and I said, "You better get home." Mummy was going mad on the ear. She says, "Oh, you shouldn't be saying that." I said, "You better get home because I said Gracie's dying." So um, that was early in the morning. So he rang and he said he would be in Belfast at such and such a time. So myself and I had to book the taxi. So I said, Dave McCauley, I'm going with you. He's not going to the hospital on his own. And he'll come here and get some date first. And that'll be it. So we went and um, we brought him up. We brought him to bed and we brought him up to the hospital. And he spent a wee while with her. And uh, the two sisters stayed with her all night. And at four in the morning, I got the call. Rudy's had the phone to say, to get Liam to go up and take the two girls home because um, Gracie had passed on. So I rang him then and I said, don't you, he says, as it's all over, I'm sure you're awake, and he says, I am. So I told him that Gracie had passed on. And but I, you, the family don't even know yet and you can't be shringing anybody. You know, I know you're not, you're not sleeping. So anyway, that was, and then on the, they were, she would tell, they were, they were taking her away out of the hospital on the, on the Saturday. And I said, we told me he had to be there. And he wasn't, oh, he, he was just, no, 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 no. We told me he had to be there. So we got him to do all the things, you know, that he had to do. Mm. And he had to go to the wake and he was going down to the side of it. He did everything we told him to do. So after that, um, he says to me, oh, well, I was out in that. He came here for his lunch and that day we were going away because Tony McCauley took him to be out and all. So then... Um, I said to me, you, I must give you something. And I'm not giving you sweets or booze or biscuits. Well, I said, I'll tell you what I want. A couple of hours of your time to paint me, to draw daddy or mm -hmm. mammy. She wouldn't, and we wouldn't do a woman. So that's there behind you, that he did of daddy for me. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, I'm thanking me for all we did. Mm -hmm. So that was me, that was all. I, mm -hmm. No, he never, he, but and then are these are all his stuff, that, anything like that that's mm -hmm. up there. There, he give me all those. And I would say, he would give me the paint, he'd say, oh, you must take this, and I would take it. And uh, I'll get it. Uh, I'll get it framed. No, I don't give half presents. And Dermot Donahue would have to go and frame mm. the one. 
Nå, he, used to, he used to send me postcards from around the world. Actually, I have a full catalogue of postcards. Mm. Oh, yeah. postcards have them everywhere. Right. My, oh, so they, uh, what you call them, Bruce Arnold came to get the stuff. I put two of them big boxes in front of me, nearly died. You know, with affection and thanks and all these letters, you know, yeah, it was so yeah. funny the things that nobody could believe that he was doing it, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then I never got sent. And then I was speaking just a load of Prince Charles, I could have spat in his head. I was in the second row of the day of the memorial. But then the security had to go, and I should have, I could have spat in his head. And Camilla and I just shook hands to him, I didn't say nothing. And then he was out there. And Joe Mulholland was here with me one day, and he said, um, but the Prince is coming, but she soon hear me sitting, oh my God. I to, oh, no, this is terrible. How am I going to get into this? But I never bothered. And fair play on Monday, Kieran Brogan to send me an invitation. So she came around, Carmilla came around, shook hands to us, and I said, I wish Derek was here today. This would be his proudest day in his life. And I said, his next proudest day would be your wedding day. Because I knew all the crack. I knew everything was going on. Mm. And uh, she was so abused. Oh, how interesting. And she couldn't stand and... Um, somebody took a photograph of the two of us, but I didn't get it yet. But all first pass was cousin took it, Antoinette Dorian took it. She says I could hear her saying to <laughs> And then he, I I went up to the front because he was going to sign the book. Mm. And I said I'm going to be up here now. We'll see if we can get on. And I could see her talking to him, obviously about me. I was in tears when he was talking about Derek and Tory Island because I knew that much mm. about it, you know. So anyway, um, he came down. And he was standing at Paul's coat, <laughs> pulled the tail of his coat, and he turned around. And I said, I'm a friend of Derek's, blah, blah, blah. I just said, Scrack this, I said to her. And that was it. But oh, gee, I was I was ripping on myself. I should have said far more. Mm-hmm. But really and truly, I knew everything that was going on between the two of them. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the night they came out mm-hmm. of the hotel years ago? When they came, mm-hmm. The first time they came out, the first public appearance. This is Charles and Charles Diana. Charles and Diana, or Charles and Carmilla. Um, he was on. What came? He was on the phone to me, and he said, "You're not ringing me this Thursday." And I said, "I'll not be ringing you. I never ring you to London." So anyway, um, about ten past seven, I got the call. And I said, "I thought you were busy. You weren't going to be calling me today." Oh, he said. Um, he was with me all afternoon. Well, I said, "The whole world's wonder they're coming out tonight." Oh yes, he says they are. <coughs> and here's me sitting in the barma. And listening to the radio from the Monday, Tuesday, when they were putting ladders up mm-hmm. to find out if they were coming out that night. You're recording all that, Jesus. 